on the harvest festival of Sukkot, a four-walled decorated hut becomes home for Jews celebrating the world over. The prayer rituals center around four symbolic species, the centerpiece of which is the etrog or citron, a lemon-like fruit. And for a perfect specimen, some buyers are willing to pay thousands of dollars. Our esrik has to be at its best. What does it mean at its best? I want it to be a nice shape. And also it's cleanliness. There should be no marks on it at all, whatsoever. So there's some marks that it's not usable. It's puzzle. It, it, you can't use it. Allochically, it can be used. Nachum Luri has been farming at Trogim in Kfar Chabad at an orchard founded by his father-in-law for decades. And for an etrog to be perfect, it must meet the Jewish religious standard as a quote-unquote beautiful fruit. It should be symmetrical and tower-shaped, wider at the bottom and narrow at the top. It should be turning bright yellow from green, but not too yellow. The peel can't be punctured through in any spot, nor can any of the inner skin be lacking. And the peel can't be too soft, cracked, dry, or peeled. Even a small black dot can render it worthless. And finally, if the etrog grows with a stem called a pitom, then that stem cannot be broken off. How many of those do you have for Sometimes harvest? never. Sometimes I don't even have anything. Hardly have it. I don't know if I have anything. But everything goes down. Okay, it's a little less. Okay. Oh, it's not the best, but it's, but it's better than the worst. But, that, that, all, that are all the levels. How clean is it? How much closer is getting to number seven? What, what will I say? Okay, I'll take it even and no matter what. It's so worth it. That's the whole, that's what everyone's looking for. You see how much, to get the 100%, it's... Uh, it's almost impossible. See, they're looking over. You see, looking back in the glass. See, they're looking. It's, it's, okay, this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. But they see perfectly clean. It's, it's, it's nothing to speak about here. So, given these standards, Luri sorts the etrogim into various price levels depending on how close to perfection they are. If you find such an esrig that its its shape is perfect, and also it's clean, very, very rare. That whatever you ask, you can get for it. And when Luri says whatever, he means it. Some etrogs sell for thousands and thousands of dollars, despite being completely worthless the day after the holiday ends. Growing the etrog is no easy task, though. It takes around-the-clock care in the orchard all year round, and even then, Luri says that in a good year, 70% of the stock is thrown out and will never reach the market. Throw out about 50% right on the spot. There's nothing not usable at all. Then we grade them in all kinds of grades. Then after a couple of months or two, you see, you check them over again, sometimes got spoiled and this, you check them over again, another 20, 30 percent you throw out. Until you get a good one, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very hard. Additionally, etrogim have to come from a quote-unquote pure and ungrafted plant, which for citrus fruit means a weaker tree that doesn't last as long. And due to a religious rule called orla, Jews are forbidden from using the fruit from trees younger than three years old which forces Luri to rotate his crop as judiciously as possible. So you have about three years on the tree. Even if the tree lasts longer, it's because it's not grafted, it's like an old tree, the fruit, the shape isn't nice, so it's not worth it to keep it. So what do we have? We have like lots, plots. Then finally in the winter, while some trees are culled and others planted, the remaining trees are given time to rest. But keeping them safe and healthy until the next harvest, continues as a more than full-time job. So if you ever get sticker shock at an etrog cart in the autumn, now you know why. Reporting from the Etrog Orchard in Kfar Chabad, Israel for the Media Line, I'm Aaron Porras.